So Christine, I want to, um, I am so super excited to have you here. You are with Sustainable Bainbridge. And if I remember correctly, you're gonna to talk to us about celebrating trees. Yes, um, and thank you so much. It's great to meet you virtually. Um, and uh, really excited and honored to join all of you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we've had, I believe this is our fourth year of Celebrate Trees Earth Month Bainbridge Island. Um, it started as probably many of you know our great um, tree guru, Dr. Olaf Rivero, came to Sustainable Bainbridge one meeting and said, we don't do anything on the island to celebrate Arbor Day and Earth Day much. Um, and while there were a lot of different um, groups, so many great nonprofits doing things, there wasn't a coordinated effort to get the word out. Um, there had been in the past and we, so we just kind of restarted it. Um, so we work with um, so many wonderful nonprofits. I, I'm a co-chair with Deb Rudnick, who is the chair of the Watershed Council. Um, and not only do we have weed warriors and zero waste, but the Land Trust and Islandwood and Parks and Rec and the Parks Foundation and just so many wonderful groups helping us get out the word and make it a whole month celebration. Um, of course, this year we had some great get together activities, um, honored tree plantings and weed pulls. Um, and of course, we're all having to go a little bit more solo. Um, but it doesn't mean that Earth Day doesn't happen and that there aren't things we can do. Um, so, you know, still really excited, so happy to be here for Earth Day and the 50th anniversary, uh, you know, on top of that. Um, and I'm, you know, happy to share ideas on ways people can get involved through Sustainable Bainbridge and other organizations. Um, we do have some online events that you can enjoy from the comfort of your own couch and bring your own popcorn, um, as well as some ideas for things you can do individually. And not just this month, but I think it was Jeanette last year who said, we should just have it all year. And she's absolutely right. It doesn't stop today. So. Thanks for having us and I'm you know, happy to, to answer, go any direction it would help for your meeting. That's so great, Christine. So um, what are, can you tell us a little bit about some of the things that you, that you promote during this time for, for celebrating trees and maybe some, some tips or some ways that people can really recognize or acknowledge uh, the importance of having trees in our lives? Um, absolutely. And I know that um, Jeanette is going to have some wonderful ideas, one of the things that everybody can get out to do to help trees. And I know Anne Lovejoy will have some great suggestions, too, on, on planting is um, something you can do in your own yard is or if you're on a walk and away from people is pull up the ivy that's coming up. Um, um, do everything you can to, to get the invasives away from those trees to keep them healthy. And I, I don't want to take up too much on that because I know Jeanette will speak to that. Um, and other things, um, you know, really looking at what else can we do, not just locally, but globally, um, is it's just little things that you can do every day all year long, like starting a compost bin and turning off electronics when you're not using them, but also getting active politically, as we know. It's very sad what's happening um, with a lot of setbacks in environmental protections. And that is something that we can all do just with our phone and our computer. Um, we don't have to worry about being around anyone. We can socially distance, but still be socially active. Um, so I really like to, to encourage people to, if you're not already in doing that, it's a great way to help our planet. Um, and year round, hopefully uh, we have another big event in September, which is the Bainbridge Island Beach Cleanup. And again, it's a lot of the same nonprofits. Um, and even if we can't do it as a big group, um, hopefully we'll still be able to have, have some kind of um, 
event and we do that with Ocean Conservancy. So that's an international event. You can also help out with Watershed Counselor, Bainbridge Beach Naturalist, if you're interested in fish and watersheds. Um, and of course, um, I know Diane will speak to zero waste and all the wonderful efforts that you can take to help reduce waste and recycle. So yeah. lots yep. of different things. We actually are in the process of updating our website. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, no, there's, it, it occurs to me, uh, Christine, you're, you're a, it obviously a library of super great stuff. I, I, the thing that you spoke to really early about the stuff we can do locally is around um, invasive ivy around trees. I'm always struck by um, uh, lots that are sort of unmaintained and the ivy that has grown so high in these uh, close to 100, 100 foot tall trees. And my understanding is it's the kind of thing that can completely uh, take over a tree and even kill it. Yes, absolutely. And um, when Jeanette joins, I know she'll be able to speak more to it, but we had a meeting and I actually learned something about, because I had just been going around and we would cut it. Um, but apparently the best way to remove really mature ivy is to cut it at about shoulder or eye level around the whole tree. And then also to cut it around the base of the tree and to remove all of those in between vines. And um, the problem is once it reaches maturity and it gets to the top, that's when it starts to flower and the birds get the seeds. And then that's why you see all those little shoots coming up all over the place. Oh, see, that's that's something I didn't know. I love that. The, it, it, it occurs to me that if you cut it at eye level, like you were saying, and you cut it at ground level, you and you take it off. You've removed the ladder or the stepping stones that new ivy could grow up to, so that it can't reconnect uh, with new sprouts. Is that the is that the theory behind it? Yes, and I just learned that myself. And I think it was from um, the from Barb Trafton with the Bainbridge um, Island Parks Foundation, and uh, she's on our committee and. I had just been trimming it one way, and so it was great to learn the proper way to do it. Oh yeah, fantastic. So I heard you say that you 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 quickly went through a laundry list of things that sound really wonderful. Um, I want to invite folks that if you have a question, if you have a question for Christine, um, in just a minute or two, I'm gonna uh, invite you to unmute yourself. If you don't wanna be on camera or be on audio, but still have a question, you can go over to the chat function and type in a question, and I'd be happy to read it for you out loud for Christine. Um, that's also a great place to sort of put questions as they're going along, and we can and and we can get them out there. Um, so Christine was talking about uh, both things that we can do locally and in our state, and also nationwide. I think people are thinking a lot about the stuff that they can do locally, just because that's where we're at. And composting has always been a popular activity here on the island. Um, do you have any? Uh, do you have any? Are there any tips in this time around uh, composting that 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 make it different than you know that make it during a time of isolation where where composting really fits in? Oh, that's an excellent question, and I think I'd almost have to defer to Diane Landry because she knows so much more about the composting. Um, but I think just in terms. Of of being, you know, we're home, we're not out and thinking, oh gosh, if I had a compost bin right there, I would compost that, but I don't. Um, so with everyone being home and being able to try and find a way to, to compost, I'm, I'm always amazed with how much we've reduced our waste to landfill. Um, we have our bucket for the chickens, the bucket for the compost. And then um, for a family of five, we usually have less than um, one can of garbage. A week, Definitely which, something. Um, I'm pretty happy since, especially with everything. <laughs> So anything that can reduce what goes into the landfill is, uh, you know, like composting is, it's a great way to start. Mm, definitely something to aspire to, that's for sure. If you have a question. And Charlie, could sure, I? Sure, Diane, go ahead. Can you see me now? I, I turned my pad around. Bear with me one sec. Yes, I can see okay. you. Yes, we sure can. 
Okay, I'm staring at the back of a computer. Um, so in terms of the compost, you just want to make sure everyone out there knows that um, if you don't have, as Christine was saying, you you might not have a compost pile at your house. Um, if you do have the yard waste service from Bainbridge Disposal, you can put your food waste in that yard waste. Not everyone seems to know that. So, and then and then also that by keeping food waste out of the landfill, we're keeping less greenhouse methane greenhouse gas going into the atmosphere because methane is a really powerful greenhouse gas and that's what's produced when food is put into anaerobic and anaerobic conditions in the landfill so it's good to divert the, the food however you can either in your own home compost pile or via the disposal yard waste service oh fantastic diane thank you for that um yeah. i want to i think we're going to go to diane next um, okay. What I'd like to do now is open the uh, is open up the floor for questions for Christine. Christine certainly is uh, a, a a is a, a treasure trove of information is a treasure trove of information and resources uh, from Sustainable Bainbridge. Who out there might have a question for Christine? Remember, you may be muted, and if you are, go ahead and unmute yourself to ask your question, or you can put it up in the chat. Uh, R. King uh, wrote in the chat, Christine, I read yesterday that the increase in CO2 increases pollen production by plants. Can any, anyone verify this? Oh, I don't know if that's a question specifically for Christine or if there's somebody who can, uh, who can answer that question. Well, that's an excellent question. And um, while I do have some science background, I think I, as a, um, I prefer not to state an answer unless I'm absolutely scientifically positive. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not sure I can answer that one accurately. But if you're interested um, in finding out more, if you can't find something, feel free to send me um, an email to our info at sustainablebainbridge.org. And if I can find someone who can answer the question, I will be happy to help. Charlie, I can answer that question. This is Anne Lovejoy. Anne, thanks oh, so much. Way right in there. <laughs> You're welcome. I had some technical difficulties earlier. You've all heard of the song, The Lost Chord. We had a lost chord moment. Um, but yeah, so true that as the temperature, ambient average temperatures rise, pollen production is increased. And we have had uh, quite a number of what are called super pollen events in the last few years because of this warming trend. And, and I just like to point out that pollen is uh, a good thing in a lot of ways, right? But for those of us who have uh, seasonal allergies, wearing the mask is actually awesome because it helps us not just socially, remember to socially distance, but it also filters out some of the pollen so we can breathe better when we're outside. Well said, Anne Lovejoy. What a pleasure to see your smiling face. Thank you, um, Anne. Any other, <laughs> any other questions before we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, move to Christine here, or sorry, to Diane in just a sec. Does anybody have any uh, follow up questions for Christine? I did put her contact information, her sustainable Bainbridge uh, email address, in the chat for folks who have questions after the fact. Anybody have a quick question they want to unmute themselves and ask before we move on? Uh, I just have something, um, Christine. Did you want to talk about the? the it was the science, the size starter thing. I'm sorry, what was that? Did you want to talk about that citizen scientist, uh, the looking at nature and taking pictures of it and then having it identified that thing for the next, that's going on in the next few days? Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, um, thanks for mentioning that. And I'm thinking the best way um, to share that information might be if I send, send some things to the senior center to share. <laughs> that's a that's a great um, fit with all your members, but there's a really exciting project. Yeah, it's a really exciting project. It's using the iNaturalist app um, on your phone, and it's become a big project internationally. But we have a core Island Woods been working with the Land Trust to coordinate something with the um, Kitsap, the entire Kitsap Peninsula to try and identify a species locally. Um, and so it's a citizen science. 
Science Project. Um, there, I'll send the links because it's quite involved, but there is an online video tutorial and you can learn about what this project is and then get outside and yard and take pictures of cool insects, mushrooms, lichens, um, anything you find that's, you know, native, natural. They don't um, really want your house cat, perhaps, but uh, if you have trouble identifying things, they help you, it, the app helps you, or you can just enter the picture and someone will help you. Identify it, but great way to get outside, use your brain, and help scientists. Um, and this is going on. They'll take a couple days of entering data and then work on compiling the information after the fact. And as I said, I'll be happy to share that information because if you want to get outside and do something in the yard and learn something at the same time, it's a great way to get involved. Oh, that's a lovely, that's a great idea. And um, uh, it's a great idea to share that with Reed Price over at the Senior Center. <laughs> There's a regular uh, there's a regular newsletter that goes out from the senior center with updates and links uh, that include from all these talks. So if you're not on the senior center mailing list, I invite you to go over to the Bainbridge Senior Center uh, website. You can just Google it, and it'll it take you right over there and uh, sign up for their sign up for their mailing list to to get that regular newsletter. So Christine, thank you so much. That's wonderful. I want to pivot now to our friend Diane Landry, who is who is who is juggling juggling a laptop to be able to to be able to be on both camera and audio with us today. Um, she's also with Sustainable Bainbridge, and she's a specialist in zero waste. And um, I'd love to give you the floor. And just a reminder for folks that are on the call: um, if you are not muted, go ahead and mute yourself while Diane is speaking, just because then it, there's no background noise. And if you have questions that come up, think about them and have them because we'll have a Q and A uh, after our presentation or you can also type them into the chat and I'd be happy to read them. Diane, the floor is yours, my friend. Okay, thanks, Charlie. Um, so one thing that you know you can do by yourself or you know at a, at a safe distance with a friend during this time is um, just go around picking up litter. We've had uh, lots of people starting to do that and they're sort of surprised at how much they've seen in the ditches and alongside the roads here. Um, Zero Waste has grabbers that people can borrow to reach things that are stuck in, in brambles or you know down in the ditches. And um, Bainbridge Disposal has decided to, at this time, they've, they've got some um, Kitsap County logoed plastic garbage bags and um, that, there's, that they have available for anybody at their business office on Sportsman Club Road. Um, and if you put litter in those bags, you can then set those bags next to next to trash cans and they will be picked up for free during this time. And Bainbridge Disposal is trying to track how many people have picked up bags of litter while we're sort of secluded. So um, if you do want to grab her um, or if you want that information about the garbage bags from Bainbridge Disposal, you can go to the Sustainable Bainbridge uh, website and the, specifically the zero waste page and we've got that information on the the website. So so that um, so that's something anyone can do during this time. Also, um, let's see, um, you know, now we can't, we aren't supposed to, well, at least at TNC, bring our reusable bags into the store. So, um, you know, just know that you can ask that your groceries be put back loose into the cart and then just wheel your cart out to your car and then you yourself put your groceries into your reusable bags once you get out to your car. Um, that's what I've been doing when I go to TNC. Um, and then a third thing, Christina mentioned something we can all do at home is, is just check in on legislation and we can contact our legislators and um, to let you know that there's a group in Washington called Zero Waste Washington and they do a lot of lobbying for zero waste bills. Um, you can go to their website and see what which bills, well specifically the, the big bill that passed this year was the reusable bag um, or the plastic bag ban. And um, so you can just check in there at zerowastewashington.org to see what legislation has gone through and what 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 Jay Inslee couldn't sign because of the budget cuts now. Um, but you know you can always um, keep up to date there and write into your legislators to encourage them to pass zero waste legislation. Um, that's about all I have because, as Christine said, you know we had other activities planned like there was a fix it fair planned which now has been postponed and, and other things um that we hope to hold later we had a trash and show planned and we don't know if we're postponing that till the fall or till next year um 
But I, that's all I have to say. What would you say, um, what, what would you say, Diane, are a, like, if you were gonna give people one or two things that they could focus on during this time when everybody finds themselves at home and sort of focusing on cooking a fair bit more and being home a lot more so they're, you know, they have a lot, they, they generally have a lot more control over their, the amount of waste that they're creating because they're not, you know, picking up nearly as many to-go containers or coffee cups or things like that. Is there any one or two things that have shown up on your radar that you'd like to share with people about either creative ways or things to focus on that that might help us um, uh, decrease our, our our use of or our creation of of uh, unnecessary waste? Well, I guess I've noticed more things being packaged in the stores, so it's harder at this time. It seems to me to avoid some hard, rigid plastic packaging. Um, and I find myself a little hesitant to, for example, get loose leaf lettuce, just, you know, so, but um, so I've actually maybe increased my plastic use a little bit during this time. Um, but also being able to be home more has made me more aware of, of, of how much packaging I actually am using. This might be a good time to, to take a waste audit at your house and just, um, you know, your week's worth of trash go through and see what what everything is packaged in and then just do a little, you know, thought exercise and how you might be able to avoid getting those same things in packaging that you normally would. But I know now that at this time, the, the bulk dispensers are closed down. For example, at TNC, I had to get some spices in a, a plastic container instead of just loose. Um, but it would be a good time. I think just to think about those things and to, you know, you take a check on what you're using at home and, and once this is all over, how you can decrease your use of packaging, that'd be one thing. I, I would love to, I, I really resonate with the idea. I, I did make a run to Costco um, the other week and I've always been a big fan of making sure I bring my own reusable bags because I don't wanna take home their endless cardboard that they like to proffer to you. Um, and of course, um, you know, and and that would that continued. Um, and what I realized was is that I could do that everywhere. It's just like you were saying, is just have them put it back in a cart. And one of the things to add an extra step of getting me through the process was I took with me a uh, a a um, a rag and uh, an antibacterial spray, and I can spray down a rag and wipe down the container. So on the way home, they're drying off after they've been wiped down, so that there's Ooh. a shorter time period between when I get home with my groceries and when they can come indoors. Okay. Um, so that's a, that's a, that's a really solid tip. I will share that at uh, central market in Paulsbo, the gravity feed bulk dispensers are back in use. So the gravity okay. feeds, not the ones you reach into with a scoop, but the ones mm -hmm. where you just pull down a handle, those are still being in use. So there's an okay. opportunity to buy in bulk there. Um, without having to buy the prepackaged, which I, I agree with you is is certainly can be frustrating. Mm -hmm. I want to share with folks that I'm putting up in the um, up in the chat a link to the Sustainable Bainbridge Zero Waste page, which includes where you can get those disposable bags from Bainbridge Disposable, Bainbridge Disposal, <laughs> and where we can borrow a, uh, a a trash grabber from Sustainable Bainbridge if that's something you're interested in. I do want to take this time. Um, so first of all, thank you so much, uh, Diane, for for sharing what you did. And I do want to open up the the floor for questions. So if you have a question for Diane, go ahead and make sure you're unmuted, and then go ahead and uh, and then ask your question. This isn't really a question, Charlie. This is Anne, but I have a use for these uh, plastic containers that people might be interested in. Please. Which is starting, I don't know if you can see that I'm putting this up here. I start a lot of my seeds indoors and I start them in those containers. So you put a little bit of water in the bottom and you put your seeds in there and the cover makes it like a little mini greenhouse. And you can get quite a few uses out of these things. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. Yeah, we've been, we've been doing somewhat of the same thing in that we've been looking for uh, we go through a fair amount of yogurt in our house and we try and buy the bigger containers of yogurt. Um, and we've been, you know, we've been working extra special hard to figure out how we can reuse, right? You know, I, you know, for every, for, for, for having a garage and being a guy, I see up here to have every tool on the planet and buckets of screws and that like, oh, well we, 
here are some here's some things that I can I can collect in these containers and reuse them and and uh, feel like I'm at least not adding to the adding to the cacophony of of stuff in the landfill. Anybody else have some question a question for Diane? Oh, and if I could add one quick thing, it's Christine um, that uh, um, and we have a post uh, related to the waste and things that can be um, recycled and which cannot. If you are on Facebook, there is an Earth Month Bainbridge Island Facebook page. And we've been trying to kind of post ideas all month long and tips. So um, if you have questions about waste and what can be recycled or can, I know that's in there too. So that's the uh, Facebook, it's called Earth Month Bainbridge? Yeah, Earth Month Bainbridge Island. <laughs> It's on the events page of, of the Sustainable Bainbridge website. Oh, great. Great, great, great. So we'll definitely uh, take a look at that and see if we can get that up for folks in the chat here. Uh, last call for questions for Diane. Well, Diane, first of all, thank you so much for, for uh, sharing your expertise with us. You're I'm welcome. gonna I'm, I'm gonna pivot here to um, uh, a, a, a woman who needs little introduction. Um, the beloved Ann Lovejoy of Bainbridge Island uh, mm -hmm. has is coming to join us, um, and she is gonna talk bring her expertise to the idea of Earth Day at home. Um, again, uh, if you're on the call, uh, and uh, I invite you to go ahead and mute yourself during Ann's uh, presentation. There'll be a time for Q and A afterwards, so think about questions you might have. And if you want to put any notes in the chat or ask a question in the chat. Charlie, you muted yourself. There we go. Got it. So the one thing I would invite people to do is be careful you're not muting everybody on the call. Somebody just muted the entire call. <laughs> and does not look like she's muted. Anne, are you ready to jump in, my friend? Sure, of course. I wanted to talk about a couple different scenarios. I'm aware that quite a few of my friends are kind of stuck alone in a little apartment without a lot of access to the outdoors. And just want to remind people that there really are things you can grow indoors. And for some of us who don't live with a lot of other people, uh, plants can become like pets and you can nurture them and take care of them and watch them grow. And it's actually delightful. So if you are in an apartment and all you have is a sunny window, you can still grow herbs, which you can then add to your daily uh, delighted food. And remember that almost all the familiar kitchen herbs are antiviral as well as antibacterial. Not that that's going to fix the world, but it just doesn't hurt at all to throw some sprigs in your omelet or your salad. The, if you have even a tiny balcony or a little terrace, you can grow things in containers. And I want to again say that almost all the food containers we get can be turned into quite decent little growing containers in a couple different ways. And one I showed you earlier how to start the sprouts uh, by putting water and seeds together. Once they sprout, you can start adding soil. Potting soil is just fine for this kind of thing. And then poke some holes in the bottom and sides. And the kind of containers that have removable tops, you can flip that container and set the a little dish right in it and it will be a, like a drain board for you so you don't get everything all wet. Uh, it's not really good for your countertops or your bookcases and ask me how I found that out. <laughs> right? But you can um, turn them into nice little containers and you can grow salad, you can grow mini uh, like sprouts, sprouted vegetables. Um, the microgreens very popular. Just get a packet of seed at the grocery store. Even the edhum greens are great for that kind of thing. Sprinkle them on some soil, cover them up with that little lid, and let, when they sprout, you can harvest them with uh, nail scissors. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Then there are, of course, people who do have backyards and do have some outside space. And for them, I would really encourage a family conversation about lawn because there is no plant on the world planet that needs to be fed and watered and cut in half every week apart from lawns. And they require a lot of uh, work, but they also get way too many chemical uh, assists. So one of the coolest things you can do for your planet is either get rid of the lawn completely, or if you wanna take it a little slower, talk about half and convert it to one of a number of things. You could make a pollinator 
plant heaven by putting in lots and lots of native plants and herbs. You could create vegetable garden and food security is on everybody's minds. So thinking about improving the soil, building raised beds, getting the whole family involved and thinking about the way that what it takes to grow food really gives us a much deeper appreciation for the people who are growing our food and harvesting our food and taking making sure we can get, get our food. Does that make sense? Sure does. So yeah, one, my, of the, Jamie, one of Jamie's big one of Jamie's big things has been getting all excited about uh, the reinvent or reinvigorating the idea of a victory garden. Absolutely, there's a big Victory Garden Bainbridge movement. In fact, that Bainbridge Prepares has uh, some posts about that on their site. Uh, the thing to remember about Bainbridge Island is that the soil is basically crap. So if you really <laughs> wanna grow food, you gotta do a couple things. And one is raised beds with decent soil is gonna make a huge difference to the results. Uh, we're very fortunate in that Tills here on the island um, makes a really good soil mix. And the soil mix that's called the vegetable garden bounty mix or whatever it is, is way better than, than topsoil. Topsoil can really be depleted and it's harvested a little too quickly a lot of times. And it's not really what we want for growing vegetables, especially in containers. I grow most of mine in troughs, those big galvanized watering troughs that you get from Senex. You have to drill holes in the bottom and for because you need to have positive drainage. And they have to be set up on cement blocks or stones so that they get good air circulation underneath and they do really drain. But mine are uh, six feet long and two feet wide and about three feet deep. And I've grown everything you can think of from radishes to climbing beans and they do great. Oh, that's wonderful. That sounds wonderful. I love the reuse. I love the idea of reusing the uh, the, the galvanized buckets. I made a set of uh, cedar uh, cedar um, uh, raised beds for my wife two years ago on a slanted angled on a slanted angled surface, and it ended up taking me weeks at a time. And uh, it might have almost taken my sanity as well. But now we have them. <laughs> so anything you could do to make it easier, just to get started. What would you recommend are um, some some easy, either some easy vegetables and fruits to to grow that for the for the new farmer, and or plants for people who are like, yeah, you know, I'm not really with a green thumb, but I think I'd like to to play with that in in during this time. Well, one thing we have to think about too is how much direct available sunlight you can offer, and a lot of us live in fairly shady places. And the good news is almost all the greens, lettuce, spinach, Asian greens, kale chard, that kind of thing. Most of those crops don't really suffer badly if they don't get full sun. If you can get about four hours a day, they do very, very well, especially at morning hours. Afternoon sun blasting can be a little hard on a lot of things. Um, but if you don't have a lot of light, you can certainly start with the greens. Kids really enjoy growing things like the Easter egg radishes, which come up in a bunch of different colors. And of course, they're about dead easy to grow. Easier to grow in a pot than in the ground because you won't get the wireworm issues. Same thing with carrots. And if you grow baby finger carrots, they really are quite small. Children love to grow those and they can harvest them really easily from a pot or container. <coughs> the great thing about those big troughs is that somebody my age who has arthritis and is getting a little hefty, it's really nice to not have to bend over and crawl around on the ground all day. You can harvest just by reaching right in there. And that has a, definite plus as we get older exactly that's that's why i, got, I always <laughs> like the idea the idea of a garden box right like a garden box that's almost at waist level has always been the one that i like the most exactly <laughs> and one of the things to think about is i got mine at Senex. they are they are watering troughs or feed troughs and the big ones that i got cost about 150 dollars. i think maybe a little less uh, the set of three was i think four something with tax but you can get smaller tubs, especially if you have a smaller space, but they do need holes drilled in them. So if you know anybody with a nice drill or you have one yourself, you just drill those holes in the bottom, put some broken pots in there for extra drainage, lift them up again, because you don't want to wreck your patio or your deck and make sure there's air circulation underneath. Does that help? 
Oh, it totally helps. It totally helps. Yeah, we uh, one one uh, one thing that I've been really surprised and excited about is the the um, is the awareness of how hardy growing um, sort of those winter greens are too. Like that, you can put like the kale and the shard that last right into the winter time. So you'll get the 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 summertime, like the 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 romaine or the green leaf or the red leaf. Um, and those have their period, but the, the kale just keeps going straight through the fall and almost regardless of the weather. Yeah, one of my favorite kales is called cosmic kale, and it's a variegated one that's perennial, and it lasts about five years. It's about three or four feet high, multiple branches, very tender all through the year. You can harvest. In fact, we've had, my daughter and I have been eating off one plant all winter, and it still looks just as fat and full as ever. Oh, that's wonderful. So I'm gonna, I would love to open up uh, uh, the, the floor to questions. If you have a question for Anne, why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself? Um, it's not often that you get uh, such amazing resources as we have here available to us on the call. Uh, our King just posted, Anne, I wanna grow bok choy. Do you have any suggestions? I say just go for it. That's my uh, my uh, familiarity with it. So uh, Sorry, I was uh, trying to get a little glass of water. Um, yeah, bok choy. All the Asian greens do very well as long as their growth is unchecked. That means you can't let them dry out. You can't drown them. But you want to make sure that every day, especially you know, I know it's raining today, but it has been very very dry, and we are what Cliff Mass has been calling a dry storm, uh, much drier than usual, so that our relative humidity is very low. And so the little seedlings especially will dry out really quickly. And so when you scatter the seed, they're usually very crowded together. I put them in four inch pots for starters. And when they get two sets of leaves, not just the first little seed leaves, but the second set of leaves emerges, then you can gently water the plant, the, the little container, loosen them up and separate them without doing much harm to the roots. And then you can separate them out and give them a little more space, like six inches to eight inches apart. And the choys especially are, do better with a little air circulation around them. Um, and they do not like afternoon sun. They do like morning sun. I hope that's helpful. I, I think it certainly is. Um, Tressa uh, did ask the question, uh, where does one find galvanized troughs, which you shared was at Senex. And for those who don't know what Senex is, Senex is a feed store and propane uh, provider based out of Paulsbo. It's on the corner of Viking Way and uh, Waterfront Streets. Um, lovely people there and um, and and very uh, price competitive uh, compared to some of the other options that are out there. Christine also posted uh, that um, there are ways to support local farmers, especially if you don't have space to grow your own, include CSAs, which you can sign up for, uh, and if you, if any of the speakers have a resource for active CSAs at this time, if you could put them in the chat, I'd appreciate it. Kitsap Fresh, Bay Hay, believe it or not, Bay Hay is still open. They do uh, have a grocery uh, and a store available. They have fresh food that they get from local farms. Um, and Christine also pointed out that this reduces the carbon waste of transporting food over longer distances, right? So they don't have to be in 18 wheeler trucks moving from uh, from 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 one place to the next. Um, Christine also posted Butler Greens is a great place to join a CSA. And Diane posted Friends of the Farms has oh Friends of the Farms has a list of CSAs. Maybe Diane, you could go over to their website and repost that link for us. That would be wonderful. Who else has a question for Anne? So, so this is your chance. This is this is a woman who has got decades of gardening love under her belt who would love to share it with us. Um, I know that we're big greens eaters in our house and um, we have a salad uh, every dinner and we go through a fair amount of greens. And one of the challenges that we find is growing enough. Um, and I'm curious if you have any suggestions either about managing that or, and or how to maximize um, your creating, creating greens. I sure do. One of the things to think about with greens is they do grow quite quickly. And again, like I said, they don't need a ton of light. They can thrive in four hours or less of direct sunlight, but they do best in good soil. And so if you're going to get the, get the troughs or containers at a nursery or a Senex or anywhere, you want to be sure that you don't just dump in a couple bags of topsoil or just shovel something out of the garden. Because in a container, 
you essentially have a, a little ecosystem and you have to nurture it. And good light open soil is not what we have in the ground on Bainbridge Island. So getting decent potting soil, or um, I like the EB stone organic soils, they're bagged soils that do quite well. Um, the greens will grow quickly if they have plenty of room and they get watered. I like to give them a little uh, kick with a combination of fish emulsion and uh, seaweed, liquid seaweed that I mix together and, and water them because <clears throat> kelp is the fastest growing plant on the planet. It grows several inches a day. And what it does for our plants is not make them grow faster so much, but makes the cell walls a little denser so that they're sturdier and they're more resilient as plants. The greens will grow quite nicely even in the cool weather we're having. You'll notice that our night temperatures are still pretty darn low, um, which means that you don't want to do beans and tomatoes and things like that yet. You want to stick with the uh, quick growing things like spinach and lettuces. And again, if you sow a bunch of them in a small container, you can tease the little seedlings apart very easily, put them in slightly bigger ones like a four inch pot, or you can start putting them into a, a larger container at proper spacing, again, about six to eight inches. If you have a real garden and you've got grounds, you can actually do them in little patches rather than just rows. So a little uh, rectangle, say, or a half circle, and then a few weeks later, do another one and do another one a few weeks later, because it's that continual sowing is going to give you a much better, more even harvest. And those of us who do eat greens all the time know you, it's really hard to have too much lettuce, almost impossible. And if you do, anybody with chickens will be your best friend. <laughs> I have a question for you. It is raining outside today, Anne. And I'm always confused about, well, it rained out, but it didn't rain for a couple of days before that. And it rained a little bit today, but was that enough to consider it watering or should I actually go out and water in addition to the rain? Can you, can you provide some question. sort of insight? Yep, and one of the easiest ways to find out is to either leave an empty bucket around, or I often use, because we have indoor cats, so I have some cat food dishes, uh, those cans, empty tuna fish can, anything like that. If you empty that every day and watch it, you can see how much water you got. And if you got an inch, that's fabulous, but it's extremely unusual. Most of the time in rain like this is pretty fitful. And so the accumulation may not be that great. Um, it didn't really rain all night. It didn't really start until about six, as far as I could tell. Uh, and so it's refreshing. It's gonna wash some of the pollen down. Um, it'll refresh and moisten maybe the top quarter to half inch of the soil, but it's certainly not doing anything for deep, uh, deep drought. And that's a good thing to think about. If you, one of the things we're seeing with native trees is a lot of uh, just, susceptibility to disease and a lot of outright death because they are drought stressed after several years of uh, particularly dry. Um, we do have a, a little over normal snowpack this year, which is awesome. But if you have native trees even that have been stressed, I would suggest that you water them at this time of year when they're really going into active growth, they would really appreciate it. And I never used to say that. I used to say, in fact, did never water native plants because they're not habituated to it. But we're seeing really deep stress in big leaf maples, in uh, all kinds of, in the cedars, especially our, our thirsty trees. Um, so this year, go ahead, give them some water. Give them a little love. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, who else has a question for Anne? Has anybody got a question for Anne that uh, that they have that some burning questions they'd like to ask? We still have a couple of minutes left. You know, I would like to ask a question. I, I this is a repeat of what I asked earlier on, Charlie. I hope this is okay. Um, sure. Uh, Anne, uh, I I woke up this morning, opened the blinds onto my patio, and I'm on the third level, as you probably know, um, of my apartment building. And on the patio, there were two large grub, um, um, grubs, um, and I would say um, probably about 15 little babies. Um, and I'm just, I mean, and some of them were as small as an eighth of an inch long. The, um, I, I couldn't figure out why. I've never seen so many. Do you mean grubs, Sheila, or slugs, or what? Slugs. 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 Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, slugs are pretty much ubiquitous here, and we have a, a special treat because 
when we get plants from nurseries that come up from California, we often get their slugs and snails as well as our own because they nest and lay eggs in the soil. So they can come out of potting soil, they can come out of plants, um, and they can come, they can be minute when they first come, uh, get born. So they don't, you wouldn't notice it. And it's not that the nurseries are infested, it's just that they're everywhere. Um, one of the interesting parts about the snails is that they were actually imported into San Francisco for the miners in the gold rush to have fancy champagne and, and snails. And there were pens in San Francisco Bay that you can still see to this day where the snails were kept, but the snails didn't stay. And so they have escaped. And that's what we see up here when you um, get the stripy shells. The slugs are mostly not our native slugs. The native banana slugs are degraders that feed on, um, on rotting old dying foliage. But the European slugs that we see that do the most damage to our plants are invaders that have come over with various plants over the years and mm. they love it here and thrive here, but it's perfectly okay to uh, dispose of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, if I remember cor correctly, Sheila shared something like a, I let them be free by throwing them off the third story floor or balcony. Yeah, I, I did. It. That's exactly what I did. I picked every single blast one of them up and threw them out. Well, I mean, like I said, I think they really belong on the on the ground, not up in the patio. Well, one thing to remember, Sheila, is if you ever do find a snail, snails and slugs are mutually adhesive, so you can use the snail to pick up the little slugs and shake them off or step on them. It's just a handy way to not get sticky. Oh, that's smart. That's smart. That's, yeah, well, I, I use a piece of paper, you know. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So I just pick up the snail like this and go down and pick it up and just dump it. There you go. Yeah. They they, they had flying lessons today, all of them. Every single <laughs> one of them. Excellent. Poor little critters. Oh, Poor my. Poor little critters. Do I feel badly? No. <laughs> So any final thoughts, Anne, anything you want to leave us with to, to help us uh, manage or, 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 or put, us, put us moving forward into our spring and summer with our time so focused on home and taking care of what we have at home? Yeah, I guess the thing I would really say is it's not a day. Earth Day is not a day. It's all the time. And our planet has nurtured us. We need to turn around and nurture it back. And one of the best things we can do is take care of our own little plot. We, if we spread compost on the lawn if it starts to heal the soil immediately really literally within minutes um, and there's very few things you can do that would be better for your property than to maintain its health and well-being so shrinking the lawn adding compost never using harsh uh, toxic chemicals all those things are going to benefit the, you and the planet oh that's fantastic that's fantastic, um, and thank you so much for joining us. It's it's such a uh, it's such a pleasure to have uh, have so many great folks join this call who have spring such a wealth of information and and positivity. I might add as well. Um, there was one question that got asked that I think would really serve us all, and I know Diane is on a tight time frame, but maybe she could um, reach in just for a sec, Diane. There was a question about what's the most recent update on what we can recycle for criminy's sake. It seems like er, that that feels like it may be changing on a pretty regular basis. I was wondering if you could unmute and share with us some thoughts about or the, what you understand about what most recent recycling instructions are. Okay, um, the instructions have not changed around here. Well, Kitsap counties have not changed. Um, and now Bainbridge Disposal has gone back to doing what Kitsap County is. So just the basics. So bottles, cans, jugs, paper, cardboard. Um, make sure it's clean. Make sure your bottles and jugs are empty. Um, mm, yeah. Regina, can you think of anything? I've got a quick question for you. Um, jugs, bottles, and the like, caps on or caps off? No. If they're no. plastic on plastic, then keep then and they're screwable, then keep then screw the cap back on after you after you rinse it out and empty it out. So okay. I, it, the yogurt containers, the different types of containers that can be recycled that don't have to necessarily be number one and two, 
and that was on the Kitsap County uh, page that you directed me to. Oh. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and so Kitsap County doesn't like to use numbers to describe plastic containers, um, even though like the jugs are number twos and the bottle, plastic bottles are number ones usually. Um, so they describe this number five plastic. Very, very. They well, refer to. Oh, you told me dairy containers are all recyclable. Yeah, so Regina is talking about like the, the tubs, like Charlie, you were saying you try to buy bigger tubs of yogurt. So like those yogurt tubs are, are also uh, recyclable. So dairy, dairy tubs. Not not like the little single size servings, like the four, six ounce ones, but bigger than that. Okay. How about clamshells? No. Clamshells are a no. They're a different kind. They're, they, it says number one on them, but it's a different kind of number one. And uh, okay. not as many. Uh, so the, the profitable, profitable ones that the ones that buyers are looking to buy are the bales of the number one bottles. Um, so the, when when our recyclables are taken to the port of Tacoma and they go through the the machines that <laughs> the bottles and cans and paper, um, the number one bottles get they get poofed off into their own bale, and um, and the like the number one clamshells would not go with them. They'd go separately, and nobody wants to really buy that other stuff. That's the kind of stuff you see if you watch the PBS Frontline documentary about plastics, the clamshell stuff is more likely to be what would be burned or thrown into the ocean once it gets over to like Malaysia or Indonesia or some uh, place like that. So, but, but the number one bottles are the valuable type of more valuable type of plastic. So who's recycling those? Definitely. Fantastic. Any questions for folks? Uh, sorry, Dale, go ahead. Oh, well, in the Seattle times, it said for this coming Sunday, their local Pacific magazine is going to be on recyclable. Recycling. Oh, okay, great. I could add a tiny thing here in that I use those yogurt containers, the lids, especially for plants, uh, plant tags, because they last indefinitely and you can write on them with a Sharpie. And because I do it in every single pot, I can use a lot of them. So you can recycle those and use them again for years. Yeah, a nice solid pair of, of uh, scissors will cut right through those. So Anne, you cut them like in the shape of you put a little cut a little point at the end of one and like that. No, I just shove them in. I use, oh, okay. yeah. I mean, I I cut down the sides of the yogurt containers. I cut off the round bottom, slice that in pieces, cut off the top, the rim of the top, slice that in strips, and you know they're all different. It doesn't really matter, but that way I really know what I've put where. Because if back in the day I used to really believe that I could remember what I had sewed in different flats. But as it happens, it's not true. I don't remember. And when they all come up, a lot of things look pretty similar. And it's like, which peas are these? The bush peas or the climbers? You got to remember. So lots of labels are really good to have. Hey, Anne, can you send me? Can you send <laughs> Bainbridge Zero Waste? Can uh, if you go to the website, the address is on there. Can you send me pictures so I can put that suggestion in the next uh, Zero Waste newsletter? Sure. Okay. Thanks. Look at us. We're making content on this call, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Diane, if somebody was wanted to, so that sounds like a resource that's coming out in the Seattle Times. Is there a resource on sustainable Bainbridge that talks about what kits at or where, we, where, where would we get the most up-to-date definitive information on recycling? Well, if you subscribe to the Zero Waste Newsletter, in the last issue, I just put a link to a page on Kitsap County Solid Waste. Um, because they they have a really nice table. Bainbridge Disposal has a resource list too. Um, I just like the format and the layout of the Kitsap County one better, but they they say the same thing. Um, so there's that. And we also have on our Sustainable Bainbridge Zero Waste page, we have a, a page called Where to Recycle Reuse Stuff. And so we've just got a long list of items on there and it tells you where you can like take something back for reuse or where you can recycle it. Things that normally wouldn't be things that wouldn't be accepted into your curbside bin, for example, um, you know, like batteries or eyeglasses or fabric squares or things like that. We have a, a list on our site for local reuse recycling. Lots of resources out there. Does anybody have one more burning question before we wrap it up for the day? Anything out there? If this would be the time, otherwise I'm gonna uh, call it a day. 
All right. Well, first of all, I just want to thank so much uh, Anne Lovejoy, Christine Perkins, and Diane Landry for taking their time, their 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 valuable time to come and join us and be a part of this. Um, remember, uh, the Bainbridge Island Senior Center check-in is a daily check-in, and uh, Reed Price is our, our normal host and uh, bringing you great content like this every day from the, the wonderful treasure trove of resources we have here on Bainbridge Island. Um, and I thank you guys so much. The, if you look in the chat, you'll see a number of different links that you can go and click to. Um, I, the, and the recording of this call will also be available through the Senior Center. I'm not quite sure on what timeline, but that's why we're recording this call. Um, all that being said, um, everybody can unmute and give us a wave and say thank you very much. And, and it was thank great to you. see you all. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Great job as usual. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. This was so much fun. It always is. And uh, I look forward to seeing you. I'll be back next Wednesday, same same time. It was, as we like to say, same bat time, same bat channel. But again, <laughs> Senior Center call is every day at this time. Okay, bye. All right, all. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.